welcome. So recently, I had this realization that I want for us to be on the same page, creatively and spiritually. The world is so complex and therefore so beautiful, and I find it unfair. For us to have to go through this on our own, I just thought you know it will be cool to share some new ideas that would be kind of helping us to re-examine some things we long thought to be just the way they are. That way to reignite some spark in our lives, the joy, uh, the the actual thrill and desire to live, understand its complexity, and marvel over how wonderful it actually is, and not never think that it's the end or you're coming closer to an end because it breaks my heart when I see so many young people being talking like they're already 50, 60, 70, you know, like I know everything about life. I have Wikipedia. I've Googled almost everything in this world. And so they feel like, dude, it's done. There's nothing else to do, but there is. And, you know, it can be very minuscule. It can be really big. It doesn't fucking matter. It's all about unclogging unclogging the crap and letting the creativity the inspiration everything you've got to just like flow through you so i have this character trait which would be basically squeezing out the most i can out of any situation uh that i'm you know exposed to whatever it's just fucking stupid but kind of comes down to a simple concept of a toothpaste yeah for example I would always find enough toothpaste every single morning in, in the tube, uh, regardless of how empty it is, just to proceed with my day. And you know, when I finally say, you know what, I think we should buy new toothpaste, like I'm done, uh, my family would be, I stand. There was no toothpaste like three weeks ago. You know that, that thing about like half filled, half empty glass? I think to me it's the same with toothpaste, you know, when you see an empty toothpaste, it might not be, but you can always find just enough. That's why I will be naming this series Just Enough. Just enough information, just enough thoughts, ideas, just enough, you know, to spike, potentially spike that inspiration and unclog the the the, the, the dirt and let the inspiration flow through you. First book that got me all hyped. It made me feel like I was an alpha male that has uh, millions of dollars in my bank account. And that book was by, you say, Matthew McConaughey. And that's why I'm presenting five ideas for you to consider and potentially adopt in your own life. So shortly about him. Before reading the book, I didn't know much about him. I knew him only from the movie Interstellar and it's because I fucking love Chris Nolan. Uh, that scene when he was crying in, in that uh, spaceship. Ooh, that's some, like next level acting. Wow, even better than I'm doing right now. <laughs> But, uh, thank you. <laughs> that, that was the only thing I knew him from. I didn't know much about him. Apparently he was like a rom-com guy, which I learned only after reading the book. But I didn't care that much about like uh, his looks, although he's hot. But I care more about his being. Uh, wow. I'm like now, I'm all over him and I want for him to become like a governor of Texas or whatever he wishes to become because I am hooked. I'm hooked. So the first point is he probably would have never been this successful and this amazing if not for his parents and not because uh, they were rich. No, 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 no. They were not rich. But the crazy thing is that they divorced twice and then got married thrice to each other. To each other. You hear me? That's insane, right? So what this made me think was that if you ever think that you are stuck in a relationship or even in a marriage, <laughs> there's always a way out. 
You can always make as many mistakes as you want and you can even go and correct them. That's what it shows, right? At least in this story, it worked. So why wouldn't work for you? Exactly. There's no reason. Second point. So his second point is an interesting one because what he says is that life is almost like a like a road. It has like these traffic lights on that road. And so you always have to be in tune with what light is on at the moment. Sometimes you're lucky and you catch a green light and then another green light, another green light. Sometimes it happens to us, right? Can you remember that time? It felt great, right? Same shit happens in life. And then he says that yellow ones are flickering and they're telling you that maybe you should stop moving and just wait. Whereas, uh, obviously, red lights say you fucking stop this and start reconsidering your life. But anyway, after the red light, yellow follows anyway. But during that time, you have to maybe sometimes even uh, get off that road and switch to another one. Or sometimes the shit hits the fan and you have to ignore the red light and just drive through it just to get back home. You know what I'm saying? Deep. The most interesting point in that is that catching green lights is actually a skill. And he says that it's possible to develop that skill through the, some focus on these few things, which are intent, context, consideration, endurance, anticipation, timing, fate, and discipline. Obviously, nothing that we haven't heard in any Instagram posts or uh, self-help books. All pretty damn obvious, right? But the discipline one, he, he can inspire you to push on the discipline aspect. And actually, personally, it kind of touched me the most because that's the one I am also focusing a lot as well. So you have a goal, you have a schedule, and you just have to follow it. Uh, regardless of maybe sometime you wake up and uh, you don't feel the hype. There is no motivation. Fuck everything. But no, there is a schedule. There is some sort of a plan, an ultimate goal that you got to follow, and you just do it. You do, you push through. And what I like about it the most is not necessarily that it helps me to actually get the shit done, but also it kind of like gives me more self-respect. Because I know that this girl, if she has a, some sort of a task and if she promised someone she'll do something, uh, she will always deliver. Almost always, but dude. So, you know, it, it just adds to the self-love aspect, nah? I think so. Let's proceed. Third takeaway, uh, it also comes from his dad. It's weirdly enough about muscles. So... When Matthew was a little boy, he really liked watching Incredible Hulk on TV. And he was saying to his dad, Dad, I'm gonna have muscles just like him. Yeah, something along those lines. And the dad said something really cool. I'm gonna read that. Yeah, big biceps make the girls scream. And they sure look good. But that old boy on the TV, he's so muscle bound. He can't even reach around to wipe his own ass. The biceps, they're for show. The triceps, the triceps is uh, this muscle. It's supposed to be that I don't have it, but it's supposed to be right here. Just, you know, for those that don't know. The triceps, they are work muscle. That's the muscle that puts food on the table, on the roof, over your head. The triceps, they are for dough. So this one, it, it was really interesting to me, not because uh, I care about muscles, which I don't really care about muscles, but it was because it was some real talk. Someone finally actually talked about reality. <laughs> And I'm so sick of that wishy-washy authorisms induced talk. Oh my god. You know, yeah, sometimes I wish that I had that one friend just like him to see it once a month. Okay, so the fourth one is going to be short because sun is down and there's no more light. Style is knowing who you are, what you want to say, and not giving a damn pretty much like what I'm doing right now. So the fifth one is the most 
important. Probably to me, it hit the most, although there were other things which were actually uh, just as interesting. So I do recommend you reading the book. But the fifth one is about the fact that he actually was studying to become a lawyer. It's because, you know, it's a reputable profession and his dad, who's quite strict and old-fashioned, it, it was just natural that Matthew will become a lawyer. And then, guess what? <laughs> he actually wanted to become an actor, but he couldn't because, obviously, you ne need to get, like, some sort of a blessing, approval from your dad before you do that. So you can imagine how that would go. Uh, with a dad who expects you to become a lawyer but actually it turned out to be quite an interesting dialogue and his dad's reaction was like priceless probably so let's go that's them talking on the phone is that what you want to do he asked yes sir dad it is silence another five seconds well don't half ass it Feel me? You know, sometimes there are just right people that say the right words at the right time. Like, I can't imagine anyone saying anything better for Matthew at that time. Pretty insane, isn't it? Of course, these few points don't do justice to the book. So, here I am, presenting you just enough to hopefully lift your spirits and awaken your uh, creativity and curiosity fella i did my part the rest is up to you so don't half ass it sure look good but that old boy in the TV, he's so...